In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of equilibrium, which happens when you have a reaction that is reversible, meaning it can go in both the forward or the reverse reaction. So we're going to start by putting some dry ice, which is carb solid carbon dioxide, in um, a sample of just water with um, some universal indicator in it. And so when you put carbon dioxide in water, what's going to happen is it's going to dissolve in the water and react with it to form carbonic acid. Okay, And then we're going to focus on the next reaction that happens. And that carbonic acid will also react with water to produce hydronium ions, which makes something acidic. So that will drop the pH of the solution, and it will also produce bicarbonate ions. Okay, So right now, we have a high concentration of CO2, so we formed a good amount of carbonic acid. And um, what we'll learn about when we write equilibrium expressions, we'll see that we have a K value which represents the equilibrium constant. Okay, so for a given reaction at a given set of conditions, you're gonna have a certain ratio of product concentration to reactant concentration that happens at equilibrium. And it will always reach that point under those conditions. Um, and so for this, when we write these expressions, if we have a chemical equation, we simply write the product, these are usually molarity, so you can use pressures for gases, but we write the product concentrations raised to their, ex, their uh, coefficient, divided by the reactant concentrations raised to their ex, uh, coefficient, okay? And so when we write these expressions, we don't include solids or liquids, but we're gonna reach equilibrium and we're gonna have some that ratio of product to reactant uh, materialize as we go. So for carbonic acid, the K expression, because water is a pure liquid, we leave that out, but carbonic acid, hydronium ion, and the bicarbonate ion are all aqueous, they're all in phase. So we can include them in the equilibrium expression. This would be a Ka value, but we'll talk about that in the acid base unit. And essentially you don't need to do any math here, but it gives us a pH of around 3.7. So we can see that it's pretty acidic. The universal indicator turns yellowish green when it's in acidic conditions of that pH. So I'm just putting this back in because it's cool and it looks like I'm a science teacher now. And now I'm gonna add some sodium hydroxide to it. So when I add sodium hydroxide, what's gonna happen is I'm going to be removing some of that hydronium ion. The hydroxide will combine with it and these will go on to just make water molecules, okay? So effectively I'm removing a product. Now, if we think about what that's gonna do to our K value, I mean our, our um, ratio of products to reactants, is we're removing some of the product. So then we would have a situation where we would be calculating Q. Now Q is that ratio of product to reactant, it's the same expression, it's just not necessarily at equilibrium. And we'll see that when I add the sodium hydroxide and I remove some of that hydronium ion, some of that product, the reaction is going to shift in order to move in that forward direction. Full disclosure, this only really works because I have an unlimited supply of CO2 in there, but the idea still works. So now I'm gonna add that sodium hydroxide and you'll see what happens. At first it turns darker like it would in a basic solution, but relatively quickly, if you look at it, you're gonna see that the system, because there's still carbon dioxide available, is gonna work its way back to that equilibrium. So temporarily, that ratio of product, which includes the hydronium ion, is lower than it should be at equilibrium. So Q would be less than K, and you can see that it worked its way back to that same point. So equilibrium, to some, equilibrium reactions are reactions that can go both in the forward and reverse direction. And we can use a K value to describe that ratio of product to reactants that would exist at a given set of conditions.